Let's check audio. Hello, 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 everybody. Good evening. Welcome. It's nice to have you one more time on this beautiful day. As you may know, we have Monday, September 18th, 2023. We're going to continue working on this module, which is pre-intermediate module. No, pre-advanced, right? It's pre-advanced module number um Number three, welcome. It's nice to have you. Let me show you what's gonna be today's class. We're gonna continue working on this one. Today, we're gonna have our last week of these um, classes, right? Um, don't forget that you need to be working on the platform with the exercises that you have for this week. Uh, if there is any inconvenience or if you have a doubt, let me know so I can help you out uh, with this one. We're gonna work with section number five, Crossing Cultures, that's the title of this um, section. And today we're gonna work with noun phrases containing relative classes as subject. Uh, as I told you before, this is pre-advanced English module number one, and this is class number 13. It's nice to have you and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, let me see. Okay, there is Giovanni. Hello, Giovanni. Good evening. Welcome. Oh, good evening. How are you? Everything good? Yeah, so far, so well. Oh, Thank you so much good. for asking. Yep. What about awesome. you? How are you doing? Um, everything is awesome. Yeah, I'm still oh, alive, goodness. which is good. <laughs> oh, and, that's uh... wonderful. <laughs> hey, I have a quick question for you, teacher. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was wondering about how is your, your scheduling here? Um, after every class, do you do you have more classes in here in in support? Or oh this, yes, this yes. Is all, oh. I have a pretty busy schedule, uh, which is which means that a lot of work for me. Uh, I have another mm -hmm. class when when I finish with you. I mm -hmm. have another class, and also I have classes at four between four and six. Um, oh my goodness. And also I have in the morning. I have two hours. Also, and I work on weekends with modalidades flexibles. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, I yes. was talking about it because actually just uh, five minutes ago, I was talking with my girlfriend and I told her that I admired. How do you find all the time? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is because I love the, the thing I do. That's pretty much. Yes. So I invest time on like getting the material and everything so I can have it ready. But I think like when you love something, you find that you find a time. Yeah, you you get used to this bunch of, let's say, planning and materials and stuff. And then at the end, it's not heavy. It's not heavy, right? Uh, when I have to rest, I rest like in December. It's like a month that is like um, no work for me. So I, I need to save some money so I can I can yeah. travel in December, right? So that's what oh, I do. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. You need to teach me how to handle my oh. time too. <laughs> oh, that means, that means like, uh, the only thing you need to focus is uh, on money, right? When you're poor and you need money, <laughs> that's a quick, like a huge motivation for you, okay? <laughs> yeah, this is me. <laughs> yes, okay. Thank you so much for asking. Thank, Thank you. you, my pleasure. My pleasure. Marlene, hello. Good evening, how are you? Hi, teacher. It's I'm nice fine. to have you one more time. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, Michelle, thank you so much for letting me know. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, don't forget, the ones that are here in the class, just listen in the class, write in the chat on soon so we can save, uh, so we can have a record on, on this uh, class about your uh, participation here, just listening. Okay, let's begin. We're gonna work with this thing that is called perspective. Are you the member, Lene? Please read the title on the top. It says perspectives, and then? Perspective, challenges of living abroad. Thank you. Do you understand the title? Uh, no. Challenge. No, oh, okay, thank you so much, no problem. Selena, hello, Selena, welcome. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Nice to have you. Good evening, teacher. Thank you. I, oh, <laughs> uh, 
Do you understand the title? Challenges of living abroad. Maybe it's when I do experiment to live in another country. So in exactly. Other... Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true, right? That is true. When you live in another country and you have challenges, right? So you, you face different challenges when you live abroad because because it's not your country anymore right so you have a different i don't know a different law uh i don't know different uh, climate let's say uh different culture so it's, it's quite interesting okay i'm going to play the audio so you can listen people are talking about moving to a foreign country okay uh and then we can have a little bit of talk on this one okay so give me a minute. Let me check out here really quick. Okie dokie, here we go. Let's listen and read. Unit five, expanding your horizons. Page 30, exercise one, perspectives. Challenges of living abroad, part A. Listen to people talk about moving to a foreign country. Check the concerns you think you would share. One thing that I'd really miss is hanging out with my friends. Something that I'd be worried about is the local food. I'm a picky eater. Getting used to a different culture might be difficult at first. I'd be worried about not knowing how to get around in a new city. The people that I'd miss the most are my parents. We're very close. Not knowing the local customs is something I'd be concerned about. I'd be nervous about getting sick and not knowing how to explain my symptoms. Communicating in a foreign language could be a challenge. So here we have these concerns. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna rate the concerns from not worried, that is number one, to number five, which is really worried. Okay, and then we're gonna discuss what will be your biggest concern. So here we have this I don't know concerns about living in a foreign country, right? What are these concerns? As you may know, yeah. Sometimes when we like travel and we when we stay there in a different country where we have some concerns, yes, that we need to face. So tell me, what will be your biggest concern and why? Yeah. Here you have these options, right? Or if you want to add your own option, you can say it. Yes. So what will be your biggest concern? Let's begin with you, Neftali. Tell me, please. What will be your biggest concern about living in a foreign country? I don't know, teacher. I, I don't know what is concern. Oh, concerns. Okay. Can you read yeah. read read this 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 concern, please? Read then. Um, something one, that one. I ah, one thing that I really miss I, hanging out with my friends. Exactly. What about this one? Something that I I'd be worried about this local food I pick it either. Yeah, so concerns are like typically these situations that makes you worried about something. Yeah, like for example, not having phone is a concern. So uh, what you need to do is you, you need to get a job, right? You get a job or you work for something so you can get money and then you buy food, right? When we travel in Naphtali or when we live abroad, we have different concerns. And here we have some examples, right, about those. So uh, my question is, what will be your biggest concern? Like if if, if, if I if, if if I move to other country. Exactly. If you live abroad, for example, in Spain or in the US or in Brazil, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I you know. Uh, for example, uh, about me, if I move to to United States, could be mm -hmm. is communicating a foreign language could be a challenge, because 
I, I don't know, for example, I don't know uh, uh, the, the knowledge uh, about the country and I don't know the culture about the people. And if I go to if I go to to restaurant, I know I I don't know how to do to to get to get the food. For example, uh, to if I visit uh, some some hotel, maybe I don't know how how to explain what I what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's good. No, believe me, what I tell you, your English is very good, Neftali. Yes, you have some mistakes as as no. But I think, and I'm sure that if you if you go to the United States and you live there, you will do it really, really good. Yeah, because because your English is good, your communication is is very good. You just need to like practice a little bit more, you know. And as 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 you know, right over there, like unless you go to the LA, right, where like a bunch of Latinos uh, <laughs> live there. But if you go to uh, somewhere else. Uh, you will be able to uh, talk in English a lot. And that will be a challenge, as you mentioned, and that will be an opportunity for you. Yes? So you can, like, let's say... Uh, um, oh, how do you say this one? Um, not just only to practice your English. Uh, you will improve, like, a lot your English, for sure. Because you will be facing... a like uh, an obligation to speak in English, yes, and and believe me, that thing when you like, when you are like forced to speak in English with somebody mm -hmm. that doesn't get anything in Spanish, that's really nice because and believe me, because that happened to me when, when, once, and, and you feel good because sometimes uh, students think that they are not able to speak good English, and they do, for sure. Yes, sometimes I, I hear students that they are humble when they try to uh, say, oh, I, I don't speak English very well, or I'm sorry for my English. Don't sorry about it. You're doing it excellent. Yes, everything you're doing is, is very good. Clear, like there are some mistakes, right? But you are doing it like excellent, okay? So keep working like that. And the word about that communication, right? Yes, uh, as humans, we tend to communicate in different ways. So, uh, and I'm 100% sure if you go there and you stay there, like for a couple of years, you will be do it. You will do it really nice. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. But I had the opportunity to 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 listen to people who lives in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, these these people come here, and and in this moment, when I listen, when I listen them. Uh -huh. I don't understand, and sometimes, in in some moments, I feel like I, I been the cloud. <laughs> oh no! Me feel... como las nubes. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Don't feel like that. I mean, yeah, that happens because that's normal, right? When when you, when you don't get that, but the more like you practice with them and you like face those scenarios, uh, or those situations, that will be like easier for you. Okay, so you will have the confidence to say, oh. I get it, or maybe I don't get it, but I'm quite sure that it's not about me. And and believe me, like um, well, most of the people that visit our country are very nice. Like the majority of them are mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah, I mean they are like friendly. They don't uh say bad things about El Salvador, uh, and that's why they travel like like i don't know to central america or to south america because they are really nice people yes uh in the u.s that is something else right you will find a bunch of people with different opinions and different um let's say ways of behave but here the people that come to el salvador they are really nice all of them because i met a lot of them and all of them are like oh very humble yeah so uh so if you think that they are talking about you so or they are saying like uh, or, or, or let's say joking about the way you pronounce the stuff. Uh, don't worry about it, okay? So uh, I'm sure that they are not saying like anything bad about you for sure. It Giovanni, could be the, and the, well, one more one more thing, teacher. Sure. <laughs> or other thing could be uh, it'd be nervous about getting sick and no no and not knowing how to explain my symptoms to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because. Yeah. It's, it's not the same. Explain that in Spanish. That is plain. 
what is the sick in English? Exactly. And say, and say, and say to doctor, me duele aquí. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That is true. That is true. And also because that is expensive in the U.S. <laughs> like here in El Salvador, maybe we can get some acetaminophen and, and just that, right? But over there is expensive. Yeah, that's 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 true, right? Like here in El Salvador, it's, it's easier to get, I don't know, like, um, I don't know, health. Uh, I don't know, support, or if you go to a hospital or if you go to a clinic, right, we can get easily uh, a doctor, but in the U.S. it's very expensive. Yeah, so yeah. I heard that some people come to El Salvador to get some, let's say, medicine or some treatment, and they they get back into the U.S. once because the treatment is very expensive over there. So And, uh, and sometimes they come to, to the dentist uh -huh. because here is... In, is 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 cheaper than in the US. Cheaper than in the US, yeah. Exactly, exactly. That is true. Thank you so much, Natalie. That's Thank you. Good. Thank you, uh, Giovanni. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My no worries. Yes, I was going to say that. In addition, uh, Natalie, no worries. Sometimes we we want to be perfect in English and we want to do our best. That's why we feel so nervous. And hey, what about if I not making the right sentence form or we try to do the structure in our minds, but no worries about it. The most important thing is that you need to do your your best, right? And just I can say it in addition that the teacher told you, please make a mistake with them. Yeah, make thank a you. lot of mistakes, no worries. And Thank you. we learn yeah. making mistakes, and your English is very good, Mr. Lee. Pretty good you sound, English, no worries. <laughs> you sound like you work like in, in, in the call center, maybe you sound like that. <laughs> He's taking calls. He's taking calls. Right? When he finished the class, he could get it <laughs> and take calls. Uh, yeah, by the way, Jeff, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. That's very okay, nice. No worries. Uh, who is Carla Selena Hernandez Guevara? Carla, are you here? Thank you. Same question to you. What will be your biggest concern? Uh, looks like your mic is off. Yeah. Um... Maybe uh, I had a lot of things. Okay, you speak one and tell me like what's your biggest concern, and then you okay, explain okay, why. Okay. Yeah, okay. don't say all of them because of the time. Okay. Um, uh, I think so. I uh, I lived um, with without my mother and father first. You're very tied to your relatives. Yes. That's, it's, maybe it's okay. so sad for me. But in other case, uh, I don't, maybe I don't meet the person in, I interact with them, for example. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Very good. What about you, Marlene Elizabeth? What would be your biggest concern? Um, my biggest concern maybe I'd be nervous about getting sick and not and not knowing how to explain my symptoms. Maybe it's in another country, right? For example, Egypt. How do oh, you say Egypt? Egypt. 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 Uh -huh. Egypt. Yeah. I mean, that's a different language, right? Yes. Yeah. Different language, different culture. Is that and... is that is that Panama or Guatemala? That's easy for you, right? So you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in Egypt. <laughs> but in Egypt, uh, maybe I stay in my house and I die in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How oh, no. oh, oh, can I do it? <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about it. That's so good. <laughs> yes, it's really teacher. <laughs> I'd rather die. I'd rather die. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm sorry. Okay. And I'm sorry to hear about it. Okay. 
give me a minute. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna show you the following video so we can uh, listen a little bit of the, oh Jesus, give me a minute. Oh, come on. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna show you the video where we have the content. So I need you to listen and watch. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Uh, then we'll move into the object, probably the object. I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've, I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's, a, uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing, but if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them, all right? So um, I mentioned one thing. Um, you could You could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mention what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about? when traveling to another country what would you be anxious about what would you be comfortable with what would you be curious about what would you be enthusiastic about what would you be fascinated by um, let's say that we choose the country uh, maybe france all right so france seems like a very touristic place and i think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country so let's do that second one one thing i'd be nervous about is Right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost. All right. Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun. Uh, the relative clause is I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the bird to be. And then this will be followed by 
the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about, is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'd be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home. Okay, that's just to give you an example. And if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept, but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many responses as you possibly can. Try to write these ideas down as this will help you learn this concept. Oh, yes. Okay. You know what? My favorite word in English is word to be. That's my favorite word in English because it's like a pain in the neck. Absolute, right? Look at here. Here we have this thing that is called word to be. You know what? Yes, telling us no. We have word to be. And we're going to keep working with this thing <laughs> in advance. Okay? Combine this thing with something else which is pretty nice. Okay, I will take the attendance, so do me a favor. Uh, when you hear your names, uh, please say present or I'm here. Let's just let me get, oh, Jesus, what's going on with Microsoft? Oh, come on. Okay, so when you hear your names, say present or I'm here. Okay, uh, if you are just listening to the class, don't forget to write in the chat here on, on Zoom so we can have a record of your uh, attendance. I got your messages on the chat on WhatsApp, but in addition, I need your um, a record of you uh, here in this class. Okay, so let's begin with Blanca Maria Gonzalez Urias. I'm here. Thank you, and it is nice to have you one more time. Thank you so much for being here, Edgar. Fernando Portillo, you told me right, Edgar, that you're going to be just listening, okay? Don't forget to write in the chat, please. Edgar, let me see. Yeah, it's here. Uh, don't forget to write in the chat so I can have your attendance. Um, Giovanni Stanley Flores Salazar, you're here, right? Yep. Wonderful. It's nice to have you. Janet Carolina Rivera Villanueva. Present teacher. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you. Jose Lino Alvarenga Gomez. Present. Gentlemen, good evening. It's nice to have you. Karen Elizabeth Bernal de Avelar. Present teacher. It's nice to hear your voice. How are you? Everything good? No, I'm so so because uh, it's difficult. Yes, yes. It takes time. It takes time. Okay, so. Uh, my column. Oh, yes, I know. I know, like, uh, my mom got a surgery, like, a few months okay. ago, and, and she's still in recovery, so uh, it takes time. I have, I have three of pair. Oh, that's heavy. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you, okay. teacher. But, uh... A pleasure. It's nice to have you. Karen Yvette Villanueva Guzman. Karen Yvette Villanueva. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Karen Yvette Villanueva Guzman. No, she isn't. Uh, okay, yes, let me check the chat. Oh, Karen, thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you. Welcome. Um, Carla Selena Hernandez Guevara, good evening. Right. 
present teacher. Welcome, Maria Santos Lopez Lopez. Maria Santos Lopez Lopez. No, she isn't. Okay, Marlene Elizabeth Paye Barahona. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Oh, Maria Santos, thank you so much for letting me know. And also you, uh, Marlene. Thank you so much. Nice to have you. Michelle Beatriz Diaz. I think Michelle wrote in the chat. Let me see. Yes, thank you so much for being here. It's nice to have you. Neftali Antonio Mejia Miranda. Present teacher. Welcome. It's nice to have you. Olga Marleni Gomez Rios. Present teacher. Thank you, Olga, and nice to have you. Welcome. Oscar Alexander Santana. Let me check. You're here, right? Yes. Oops. Present teacher. Nice to have you. Welcome. Okay, okay. Let's carry on with Roberto Eduardo Escamilla. Roberto, you're here, right? Thank you so much for being here. It's nice to have you. Sara Elisa Belloso Hernandez. Present. Thank you so much, Sara. It's nice to have you one more time. Wendy Cecilia Molina Rosales. Hello, Wendy. Let me check. Wendy is here, but she doesn't answer. Okay. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you. Uh, don't forget that, Wendy, write in the chat on Zoom so we can have a record of your attendance. And Jenny Carolina Ardon Cruz. Hello, Jenny. Are you here? Oh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much for letting me know. Also, Wendy, I got you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's carry on. Let's, let me show you. We're going to work a little bit with adjectives so we can practice a little bit on this one. Here we have some adjectives. Sara, please read the adjectives that we have here. Three columns, please. Go ahead. Okay, anxious, comfortable, confident, curious, depressed, embarrassed, um, enthusiastic, excited, fascinated, homesick, insecure, nervous, uncertain, uncomfortable, worried. Thank you so much, right? As you may know, we have positive and negative adjectives, yes? Um, in English, right? And we use these positive and negative adjectives to communicate way the way we feel or the way like we are sometimes, right? Depending on the mood or the different circumstances that we may have. Uh, so we're going to work first of all, like writing P if that is a positive adjective and letter N if that is a negative adjective, okay? So we're going to start with you, Olga, okay? The first column, Olga, tell me, anxious is positive or negative? Positive. Anxious? You know what's anxious comes from anxiety. No, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yes, negative. Very good. What about comfortable? Comfortable. Positive or negative? What do you think? Positive. Exactly. Very good. Positive. What about the other word? Confident. It's positive. It's positive. Exactly. Very good. Uh, what about uh, curious? Curious. Positive. Curious. curious is positive. Okay. And what about depressed? Negative. Yeah, exactly. Why? Right. Exactly. Negative. Very good. Uh, let me see. Uh, Marlene, thank you. Second column, please. Help me. Em embarrass. What is that? Positive or negative? Uh, negative. Oh, negative, right. What about the other one? Enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Positive. Oh, it's a positive, right? Like uh, yeah. like Independence Day. Everybody was so like enthusiastic about the marching bands. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about the other one? Excited. Positive. Positive. Excited. Yes, very good. Fascinated. Positive. Positive, thank you. And homesick? <laughs> Negative. Negative, right? If you want to, like, sometimes we get, like, homesick, right? Just yeah. just by staying at home, right? We can we can get, like, Joselino, thank you. The third column is for you. Insecure. Positive or negative? Negative. Exactly. Negative, negative. very good. Nervous, what is that? Positive or Negative. 
Negative. A negative. I'm certain. I don't know. Certain is negative. A negative, right? Yes, don't have negative. Uncomfortable. Negative. Negative. And worried. Negative. Yeah, the word is like the sun, right? Don't worry. And then we have okay. So, and how do we use these adjectives? Well, pretty much like this one. If you look at it here, we have A, B, and C. We have like a short conversation using these adjectives. So that's why I'm going to request Giovanni. You're going to be letter A. Um, Selena, you're going to be letter B. And you, uh, Neftali, you are letter C. Okay? Neftali, yes? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. Wonderful. Okay. I felt very embarrassed yesterday. I fell down the stairs in a restaurant. How did it happen? I think I slipped on something. Did you get hurt? Just a couple of bruises, uh, but the restaurant manager was worried. So he... Oh, goodness. I'm not able to see so much. Well. Um, Sorry, let me let me fix that so you can see it better. Give me a minute. Please. No problem. Yeah, everything has a solution. Right? Just, just give me a minute, okay? <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's your time. Okay. Jesus, come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. You can see it better. Okay, here we go. Let me see. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, now, just a couple of bruises, but the restaurant manager was worried. So he convinced me to go to the hospital. Very good. So the adjectives, this is the way we use them, right? So we got like an a scenario or a situation that happened to us, right? And then we can use these adjectives to communicate something, right? As you may know, this context is about the present, the future, or the past. Uh -huh, Marlene, tell me. Mm, the past. Exactly. How do you know that that is the past, Marlene? Because the end, he used, I feel very embarrassed. Exactly because right. And I also we have the vocabulary that goes with the past, which is yes, yesterday. So when you see, oh, that means something about the past. Okay. Yes. And this is the way we use the adjectives. Okay. Um, what I want you to do is, is think about a situation that happens to you in the past. Yes where you use these adjectives, right? For example, I don't know, something that happens to you in the past, yes? And I need you to make this sentence, okay? How how did you feel about it, okay? Uh, you can say, well, I felt insecure, I felt nervous about, I don't know, doing an interview, or I felt like worried about the uh, activities in the platform, or, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, um, nervous about uh, a soccer match or something like that. I want you to make three sentences, just three sentences about something that happens to you in the past using the adjectives. Okay. I don't know if you're getting this one. Carla? Yeah. Sarah, do you understand what are you going to do? Yes. Okay. Just three sentences and you pick... Uh, one of these ones, well, three, basically, three adjectives to communicate something that happens to you in the past. That could be something positive because we have adjectives that are positive or something negative. Yes, at the end, it's up to you. So you, you pick the adjectives that you want to uh, express. Yes, just three sentences. I'm going to give you seven minutes to do so. And then I will hear your participation from this one. Yes? 
If you do not understand, let me know so I can repeat this one. Yes. Uh, what are you going to do? Use three examples, like the first one. I felt very, and here you can change the adjective, right? Anxious, like confidence, curious, and then you add a compliment, right? Yes, about something. Yes. Um, and then I will hear your sentences, right? And again, remember, this is about like uh, practicing, so I need you to write it down in your notebook, yes? And um, if you do mistakes, don't worry, okay? We will help you here or together so we can fix those, yep, right? Um, or if you want to talk about the future, yes. But this is about experience. So basically, if you like have an experience, it's pretty much in the past, yes? So, so my recommendation is write something that happened to you in the past. Oh, I love this picture. Look at the way she looks. She's very confident. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a very nice picture. Okay. If you do not understand at home, what are you going to do? Uh, ask me about it. Okay. Tell me. Oh, yes. Uh, what I need you to do is just write three sentences about something that's happened to you in the past where you include you include these adjectives right one or two or you can use you can combine you can use two if you want yes um Hello, Jenny. Have you finished? Yes. Hello. Because <laughs> your mic went on, and then what is Sara? Are you here, Sara? Sara. Yes. Oh, are you done with this? No. I just wrote two two sentences. Oh, oh okay, okay. So you you still have time. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Sorry about it.
Okay, okay. Let me see. We still have one minute left, so don't worry. One minute left. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh just one. I was I will pick just one. Just give me one example. Okay, let's begin with you, Olga Marleni. Thank you, Olga. Give me one example, please. Okay, teacher. Um my example is about the student. For me it's positive. And um, well, I felt very confident uh, two weeks ago when my best friend came to the country and we need to talk. Uh, to talk. Oh, that's very good. Just just be careful with um with the present and the past together. Okay, um, sometimes we can use infinitive, but we need to be careful a little bit, right? Yes, you're, you're seeing that part. Okay. Um, okay. But that was very good. You got you got the idea of using these adjectives, right? When, you, when it comes okay. to communicate how you felt about something in the past. Very good. Thank you so much. We're going to have Janet, Carolina. Thank you, Janet. Give me one example, please. Oh, let me check. Uh, okay. Can you participate in it? Yes or no? Blanca, can you give me one example? Just one, Blanca? Uh, yes, teacher. Perfect. Okay, yesterday I felt angry <laughs> at a uh, uh, job because in the account lost the, how do you say, factura? Um, uh, I think bills. Let's call bills because I don't have the exact word. Okay. Invoice. Oh, invoice. Very good. Invoice. Okay. Thank you. And the accountant lost the invoice, so she told she told to my boss that I lost the the oh, invoice. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> so they blame on you. Yes. Oh my God! But I'm, I'm so pretty right. sure I don't. I didn't lose the the invoice. Oh, so you but were like this woman right here, right? Yes. <laughs> you were very very confident. Oh, that's very. I'm sorry to hear about it, but uh, at the end, like uh, when you're sure about something, right? You feel like this woman, very confident and everything. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's very good. Yeah, I love your example. You nailed it. Yes, and that's the idea, right? To communicate something like that. Okay, we're gonna hear a little bit more of the grammar part. So um, I would like to play this audio for you so we can like recap uh, uh, this thing and then we can have a little bit of practice of this uh, topic. Okay, let's listen and read. Page 31, exercise three, grammar focus. Noun phrases containing relative clauses. Something that I'd be worried about is the local food. Something I'd be worried about is the local food. One thing that I'd really miss is hanging out with my friends. One thing I'd really miss is hanging out with my friends. The people I'd miss the most are my parents. The people who I'd miss the most are my parents. The people that I'd miss the most are my parents. 
The local food is something that I'd be worried about. The local food is something I'd be worried about. Hanging out with my friends is one thing that I'd really miss. Hanging out with my friends is one thing I'd really miss. My parents are the people I'd miss the most. My parents are the people who I'd miss the most. My parents are the people that I'd miss the most. Thank you. Giovanni, please read this information here about the relative pronouns, who and or that. Sure. The relative pronoun who or that can be left out in the nouns, phrases, and the, sub and the subjects and as objects. These first sentences have exactly the same meaning. One thing I'd be nervous about it's getting lost. One thing that I'd be nervous about it's getting lost. Getting lost is one thing I'd be nervous about. Getting lost is one thing that I'd be nervous about. Thank you so much. Okay, so the idea with this extra information is that these words in parentheses, that or who, sometimes, yeah, I mean, if you don't want to use them, well, don't. Yeah, nothing happens, right, about it. So, um, page 30. Thank you so much, Giovanni. Oh, Jesus. One more time here. Okay. Well. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We're going to have answer the question using the words in parentheses, write each sentence two ways. Leave out the relative pronouns. If you went to live in a foreign country, who would you miss a lot? Person or my friend? One person I miss a lot is my best friend. My best friend is one person I miss a lot. So we're going to use these two sentences. One is as a subject and one is as an object, right? And uh, we're going to try to uh, use the material that they give us, the one that we have in parentheses. Okay. So what what is the number two? What would be, <laughs> what would be very interesting in? Oh, what would you be very interested in? Things, the food, and the music. Um, how do we begin this sentence? Because we have two. I guess the things that I am very interested in are. Yeah, yeah. You you got it. Two. Give me a minute. Two things you told me. Mm -hmm. What is next? That I am very interested in. Oh, very good. I be like this one very very interested uh, in R. Oh, very good R because we have two, right? Mm -hmm. Food yes. and the music. Yes, very good. The food and the music. So it's like here they give us they give us like uh the material, right? And then two things. I just need to write here plural. What else? That I'd be very interesting are to put in the music. Yes, I think that I don't have a mistake, right? Okay, so the two things that I'd be more okay, very good. What is another option of saying this one? Another option is the food and the music Beautiful. are Beautiful. Okay. Very good. The food and the music you told me, right? Mm -hmm. Are two things. Oh, beautiful. Two things. That I'd be very interested. Oh, you nailed it. Yes. Okay. Be very uh, interesting. If you notice here also, uh, we're using the adjectives that we were discussing. Um, yes. Oh, that's very good. Let me check if I, if I, if we have it, everything right. The food and the music are two things that I'll be, I think it's perfect. Let me know if you got a different opinion about it, but well, I think both of them are correct. Yes. Right. We have one is a subject and the other one is, 
as an option. Very good. Then we have number three. What would you be worried about? Something they give us like uh, that one and not in understanding the custom. One thing. Uh, uh, no, they give us something already. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. One something. Oh, yes. We're going to have something. One something. Oh, Jesus. Something. Let me let me put it down a little bit so we can see better. Something. Mm -hmm. But I oh, be worried. I'd, I'd be worried. We worried. About. Worried about. It's oh. not understanding. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's not understanding. Under, oh, give me How do you say custom or cost? Cost. Custom. 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 Okay. Un understanding. Okay, understanding. The customs you tell me right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like here in the salad. Okay. Oops. Okay, like that. Yes. Let me make it bigger so you can see it better. Yes, yeah, something that I'd be worried about. It's not understanding the custom. Yes, beautiful. That is correct. What is what is another way of saying the same thing? Like this one is like a person, my best person. Oh, my best friend. It's an object and then a subject. What is this one? Uh huh. What is the other? Can I say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. Maybe not understanding the custom. Not un understanding the custom. Very good. Um, okay. Customs. Of course, it's plural, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that I be worry about. No. Perfect. It's something. Something okay, that you told me. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be worried about. Worried about like this one, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Sorry about okay. Don't forget that if you want, like you can uh, omit this this expression that. Yeah. If you want, you can say, Oh, not understanding the cost and is something I'd be worried about. Yes, and, and you're like right with this one. Yes. Um, okay. This thing sometimes sounds like very long, and that's why I was like saying like, oh, verb to be is my favorite verb. Because it's like, here we have it, verb to be. We need to be playing with singular and plural. If you see this number three is singular, right? Because we are using the verb to be is. And over there in the number two, we're going to have R. So you don't forget that you need to be playing with this one as well. Yes. And and be somehow carefully about it. This exercise is, is quite good. I love it because it gives us the information. If you see here, we have the subject, people. Okay. Uh, and then the rest of the information. So we can so we can figure it out. How do we do this one? Right. Um, so it's like. I don't know how to say what. The only thing I think that we need to do here is that we need to practice as much as we can. Yeah, so we can get used to all. Oh, we're going to use this one as a subject, and then we're going to use this one as an object. I hope that we can practice a lot uh, this week. Oh, okay. Also, you have some exercise in the platform about this one. If you have any question or if you need some help with those, uh, let me know uh, so I can help you with it. If not, don't forget to practice your English every single day. I know your 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 family, I know your friends, I know your co-workers with your English. Uh, and keep practicing. Don't forget. Don't forget to keep practicing. Thank you so much for being here. Good night, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye, Blanca time. and everybody. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you.